Last time, we dipped our toes in the realm of color vision. We explained why we couldn't simply correlate RGB values to the ways that the cone cells operate. We also looked at how shifting the spectral sensitivity can affect the brain's ability to register unique combinations of light. But today we're going to be talking about color blindness and color deficiency. If we recall back to the last video, we said that in order for us to differentiate the different wavelengths of light, in other words, color, we needed two different cone cells that'll tell us which wavelength and how strong that signal is. And it's the ratio of these two cone cells that we use to differentiate whether a color is this color or that color. But we still ran into another problem. If I presented a stimulus that is exactly in the middle, then we wouldn't know, let's say for example, whether there was a color yellow or a combination of red and green. So in other words, the overlap between the two curves is good because it tells us more information about which color is which, but too much overlap means that it's often difficult to determine whether we are seeing the actual wavelength itself or a combination of these two wavelengths. And this is where color deficiencies come in. But before we go any further, I just want to clarify the difference between color blindness and color deficiencies. Color blindness means that you have absolutely no perception of color, or you are achromatic. Remember, if you only use one channel to analyze the different wavelengths of light, given that the curve peaks at, let's say, 500 nanometers, then due to its symmetry, the wavelengths that are higher and lower than 500 will seem similar. It is so similar that it's often hard to differentiate. You can see why this is a problem. This is color blindness, no color at all. Then what about color deficiency? Color deficiencies are when you have an altered gene of one or more of the cones. Out of all the color deficiencies out there, the red-green deficiency in the male gender is by far the most common. This is due to the fact that the mutation arises in the 23rd pair of chromosomes, the ones that determine gender. If you had a mutant X chromosome, then for females, if you had a non-mutant X chromosome, then this non-mutant X chromosome would overwrite the mutation. However, for males, the Y chromosome can't do that, and that is why the mutation manifests itself in the phenotype. So what does that mean for cone cells? The M cone, which corresponds to medium wavelengths of light, are shifted closer to the L cone, making the contrast between red and green very difficult. Here, I'll show you why. Here are the L and M cones. I'm going to make a mutant copy of the M cone and slide it closer to the L cone, and we'll hide this for now. Let's have a look at how the cone cells respond to the different wavelengths of light. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Very good. As the wavelength increases, you can see that the L and M cones differ in the output response. It is this difference that makes the differentiation between red and green possible. Let's now have a look at how the mutant gene did. A similar response, but we can see that there are areas where the L and M cone increase together. This is an issue because there are two ways that this can happen. Number one, if we presented the eye with a different wavelength, like in this example. Or number two, if we just had a stronger signal of the same wavelength. This is where the confusion arises. Is the light that I'm seeing a different wavelength? Or is it the same wavelength, but more intense? This is color deficiency in a nutshell and it constitutes the foundation of all the color vision testing that we do in optometry clinics as well. Why is it that these plates are made up of orange and green? It's because these colors are the ones that deficient eyes will have most trouble with. Are these the same wavelength, but one is just less intense? Or are these two different wavelengths altogether? Color deficiencies can vary in severity, so you can have less color deficiency and more color deficiency. The plates that optometrists use in the clinic are extreme examples, and it's just an indicator to tell us whether or not a person has a deficiency. It doesn't tell us enough information about the severity of the deficiency. For that, you have much more fancy equipment. But again, before I bore you with any more science, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you learned something new or at least found something useful. If you did, then yay, thumbs up to you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.